The Battleground Toronto now. New poll this week. This time is coming from the firm Nanos Research, and it shows John Tory pulling away from the pack a bit. At 42% support, 42, Tory has a 14 point lead, Nano said, over Rob Ford at 28% and the Olivia Chow at 26%. Pollster Hamish Marshall of Abingdon Research joins us now for a look at the Nanos numbers. And uh, this, you know, whoever the poll, pollster is, uh, Hamish, this time it's Nanos. We've had seen polls from Forum. The trend line over the summer has been pretty clear. Tory up, Ford muddling around this point, Chow down. Absolutely, David. What we've very much seen is a continuation through Labor Day of what we've seen all summer. John Tory's gone from being behind, to slightly ahead, sort of a three-way muddle, to now quite decisively ahead. Uh, 14 points is a great lead to have. There's still quite a few lot of time left, but it's, it's, it's a good, strong lead to have. And what's even more encouraging for him is the fundamental numbers, the impression numbers, uh, behind those ballot numbers are even stronger for them. Uh, when we cover, most of the campaigns we cover are measured in, you know, four-week chunks, five-week campaigns. Right. This is an exceptionally long campaign, <laughs> and we're still, what, two months, I think, till, yeah. well, well, more than that, maybe, uh, till, till we get, get to, uh, yeah, about two months till we get to vote. In any event, uh, the kind of lead right now, I'm assuming there's still lots of room for even Olivia Chow, perhaps, to make a comeback. Most people, pollsters say, what, you can make two points a week or something like that? Well, it depends on the dynamics of the race. In 1995, Mike Harris picked up 23 points over the course of four weeks. So wow. uh, you can certainly move quickly if, you've, if you take control of the narrative of the race. Thus far, uh, Olivia Chow seems to have lost control of the narrative. She was, she was ahead in the spring. Uh, John Tory is the one making the news. In many ways, Rob Ford has is, is, is simply become a sideshow. There's about 30-odd percent of people who are going to vote for Rob Ford, mm -hmm. uh, probably come hell or high water. And really, the election's being determined by the other 70 percent of people who've sort of moved on from the Rob Ford drama, and they're focusing on the other two candidates, which is primarily uh, Chow and, and Tory now. And it's really going to be determined in the next couple of months what, whether Chow can tear John Tory down uh, enough to get ahead. Uh, and by all accounts, she's retooling some of her campaign team now, but she's got mm -hmm. a lot of work to do. And one of the things I noted in the poll, too, was a big chunk of undecided. I think it was 17 percent uh, said they were undecided about that time. And again, if you've got a lot of people still up in the air, well, presumably that means lots of work for Chow and Tory. And, and let's not forget David Sugnacki out there. Who knows? Um, <laughs> for them to try and appeal to voters. Uh, yeah, there's lots of time left. I actually think 17 percent at this point in the race is actually quite low. Um, oh, there you go. Uh, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I really think that the, if, if people were really unsure about John Tory or they weren't sure about the Rob Ford dynamic, we'd actually see a much higher uh, uh, level of undecideds, maybe in the 24, 25 uh, percent range. So I think that 17 percent undecided is actually probably good news for John Tory because it, it doesn't show there's a ton of other people who are left to make up their mind who can really change the dynamics of the race fundamentally. Um, one of the things, I, I, like, there's a, I assume the voter is, is first of all, uh, it has to come to terms with one issue. Will you vote for the incumbent? And I guess in most right. elections, that's one you vote for. Will you vote for the incumbent? And I'm assuming you just mentioned those Ford voters are staying with Ford. They're not going anywhere. And on the other hand, um, it, the, if is John Tory's, if you said yes to John Tory, is your number two Ford? If you were one to Chow, is your number two Ford? I bet Ford is not number two, three, or four on anybody's ballot card. He's number one or, or, or nothing. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's almost like there's two different electorates. There's the Rob Ford, the Ford Nation, who are, are rock solid there, and that number has been jumping around, but pretty consistently for the last couple of months, sort of between about 27 and 30, 31 percent, which is basically within the margin of error of all these polls we're seeing. Um, and that's really, really rock solid. And then there's this other electorate that's really moved past Rob Ford. They're just saying, look, we're not voting for that guy. Let's figure out who's going to be the best bear for the city. And they're making up their minds based on things like transit plans and everything else. And John Tory's got an advantage because when you look at the, the, the numbers, the, the Nanos poll actually asked a bunch of other numbers about trust uh, and uh, competence. And John Tory's numbers on those are even better. They're actually extremely good, which shows that he's actually, if anything, got some room to grow. Well, and, and there you go. And I know that uh, folks in your trade look at a variety of variables. Some are leading indicators. Uh, the horse race poll is sort of the, the final one. And, and issues about personal approval of the candidate and so on. And as you said, in that sense, everything is kind of lining up for Tory, making the job all the more difficult for Olivia Chow. Uh, absolutely. I mean, Tory's uh, trust and confidence numbers 
are, are very, very, very high. Often at this point in the, in the game, if you expect the dynamics of this race to be people saying, well, I'm going to vote for John Tory because he's not Rob Ford, and maybe because he's not Olivia Chow, and I don't really like either of them. And I'm not wild about him, but he's sort of the best of the other options. You would see those trust numbers and confidence numbers being quite a bit lower as people are saying, I don't really like the guy. Maybe I don't trust him. Maybe he's not so great, but he's the best of a bunch of, of poor options. But we're actually seeing the opposite. His trust and confidence numbers are very strong, and his polling numbers are reflecting it. So what we're seeing is his campaign thus far is putting forward that message of trust and competence which is really attracting voters and he's got room to grow from it. We'll see if in the next you know seven weeks or so if Olivia Chow can can put a dent into that and say look he's not here's why you shouldn't trust him or here's why he's got not competent. Yeah lots and lots of time to go. Hamish Marshall <laughs> joining us tonight to chat about Toronto from beautiful Vancouver. Appreciate it Hamish. Thanks. My pleasure David.